So in this one, we're going to take a look at what's coming up on the horizon for Laravel. So this is an amazing platform that you can use to develop almost anything. So what is coming up as far as what's new in Laravel and version 11? So we're going to take a look at that right now. But let's just jump to the documentation. We're going to scroll down just a little bit and we're going to take a look at supported policy. And right now we can see that there's a new version of Laravel coming up and it looks like it's version 11. And what's interesting to note is coming out in the first quarter of 2024 and just looking at like previous releases, we can see that maybe it'll be sometime in February as what will be the first quarter. There's a rumor mill that I think it's February 6th, that's going to be the date, but we know it's going to come out sometime in the first quarter. So hopefully February based on these patterns. So it looks like version 8.1 works for all previous versions of Laravel, but in version 11, you're going to need a minimum requirement of PHP 8.2. So you can check out the latest version of PHP by going to php.net. And you can also see what versions of PHP are being used and which ones are going to be at their end of life. So usually PHP has about three years before they turn their version over to what's called end of life. So in 2021, version 8.1 came out. And during that time, two years worth of support. And on the third year, usually it reaches end of life. So we can say that PHP uh, 8.2 came out around 2022. And we're looking at 2025 before it reaches its end of life, which kind of makes sense is why Talarval is starting to use version 8.2 because towards the end of 2025, that's when they'll be supporting bug fixes until this date, it looks like, and security fixes until this date. So they're just trying to coincide with what and how PHP is being developed. All right, let's jump in the terminal and take a look at some stuff. So now inside my terminal, I'm inside my projects directory. And within that, I'm just going to check the version of PHP. In my case, I'm using version 8.3.1. And you can update your version of PHP we do so on this channel using Homebrew, and I'm going to show you guys another method later on in the channel how to do that as well. There are videos on this in the channel that you can follow and get your version of PHP up to date. So just keep in mind that the minimum version required for Laravel 11 is 8.2. So if you want early access to the dev copy, you can say Laravel new, and you can create a new project. And in this case, I created a project called Laravel 11 and use the dash dash dev flag. So I've already done that, so I'm not going to run this application. And I also created another one called L10. So this is just to compare the two frameworks, Laravel 10 and Laravel 11. So with that said, I'm just going to CD into my Laravel 11 directory. So now I'm going to jump into the browser to show you both versions of the project. So over here, I have a version of Laravel 11. And as you can see, it's the 11.x.dev, and we're running a version of PHP 8.3. And over here in this browser, we now have the current version of Laravel, which is Laravel 10 4.1 as of this recording, and it's running also 8.31. So you don't need 8.31 to run Laravel 10, but in this case, since I'm on PHP version 8.3, we're running the same versions of PHP. Okay, let's take a look at both of these projects inside of an IDE. All right, so here we are in both projects. So I have a version of Laravel 10 open over here on the right, and on the left, I have a version of Laravel 11, the development uh, branch. So at first glance, it doesn't look like there's a lot that has changed, but Laravel 11 is geared towards being a slimmer application skeleton as that compared to Laravel 10. So let's take a look at some of the obvious things. So we'll start at the app. So I'm going to the app folder inside of Laravel 11 and the app folder inside of Laravel 10. So when we open up the app folder inside of Laravel 10, we can see that we have a console folder, we have exceptions, we have the HTTP folder, we have models and we have providers. In Laravel 11, two of those folders are missing. So we're missing console and we're missing exceptions. So let's take a look inside the HTTP folder inside Laravel 10. And then we'll also open up the folder over here on the left. So we're also missing the middleware folder in Laravel 11. And you also notice that we're missing the kernel.php file, which was present in Laravel 10 and is no longer in this directory in Laravel 11. So let's just open the controllers. And if you have a keen eye, you'll notice that the actual controller .php file is a class. And in this version of Laravel, Laravel 11, the actual controller.php file is actually an abstract class. And you notice in this abstract class, it contains at least one abstract method. It's declared, but it's not implemented in code. And over here, we have a class that is being extended by a base controller. And over here, we have these traits that are being used by this class. So that's a pretty noticeable difference inside of how the controllers are going to work versus Laravel 10 and Laravel 11. Okay, in the models directory, we still have a user.php file. So the user's model is being created here in Laravel 10 and also in Laravel 11. Over on the left, under the providers, there is one single file app service provider 
And in Laravel 10, there are literally five service provider files. Okay, let's take a closer look at these files. And as you can see, for the most part, I'm not gonna go into all the details, but they're almost identical. So let's close the app folder on both projects. And let's take a look at this bootstrap folder, which has changed significantly in Laravel 11 versus Laravel 10. In Laravel 10, we only have the single app.php file. And in Laravel 11, we also have a providers file. And you can see that inside of this file here, Laravel 11 returns an array of service providers. And more than likely, this is where you're gonna add the rest of your service providers. So you'll keep your service providers inside of a single provider class called providers.php. And within that, you'll have the list of different providers that you want to have in your project. Let's go back to the list of directories. So just taking a quick look, it looks like the bootstrap folder is gonna play a significant role in how the project is scaffolded inside of Laravel 11. Another interesting thing is if we go to the config folder here in Laravel 11, all the configurations that we used to have are no longer visible, so they're, they're gone. If we compare that to Laravel 10, we'll see that all the config files that we normally have in original scaffolds when we first created a Laravel project are listed here. Now, they're not gone completely from Laravel 11 per se, they're just not published. So let's jump to our terminal and take a look at how you can put that in. If you're familiar with Laravel, there's a command called PHP Artisan, and PHP Artisan will list all the available commands that are available within your project, the things that you can do. So I'm using an alias called PA, but the full command is PHP Artisan. It will give you a list of all the commands that are available that you can use with Artisan. So the one that we're really looking for, I'm gonna scroll to the top, is config. You would type in PHP Artisan config, and the one that we're looking for is this one here, publish. So that's what's missing on Laravel 11. So within that config directory, it's empty, but we can use PHP Artisan to actually publish the configuration files that we need. So let's try that. So I'm gonna say PA for PHP Artisan, use config publish. So it's PHP Artisan config publish. And what that will do is bring up this interface that we can choose which configuration file we'd like to publish. They're all visible here, all the way down to views. So let's just publish views because we're on this right now. Let's take a look. So inside of our Laravel 11 project, you'll see that view.php shows up underneath the config directory because we published that using Artisan. Let's take a look at the file and let's take a look at the view file in Laravel 10. So what it's saying here is, you know, your views will be in a folder in the framework under views. So all your blade files will end up inside of this views directory, inside of your framework, inside your project. So you can do this for every file that you want to add to the config folder. So let's go back to the directories. If you go to the .env file inside of Laravel 11 and you go to the .env file inside of Laravel 10, so you'll notice that if we compare the Laravel 11.env file and the Laravel 10.env file, there's some noticeable differences. For instance, this one has app time zone, this one doesn't. You go down the thing, you can see that your locales are available here. So these are usually some of the settings that are available in the app.php file inside of the config folder. So once again, you can publish that using PHP Artisan and you can control those things there or it looks like you can be able to add them to your .env file for a little more convenience. So they are working on slimming down this framework and only publishing the files that are necessary or that you feel necessary for your application. So at any given time, you can change this to whatever your time zone is. And that'll be the equivalent of what's in your app.php file. So I'm not gonna go through every one of these, but note that there are slight differences in the Laravel 11.env file than to that of the Laravel 10.env file. So let's go back to the directory structure for this project and this one too. And if we take a look at databases, we have the user factory on Laravel 10, we have the user factory on Laravel 11. And what's really neat here is they added another migration or they kind of slimmed down the migration. So if we go to the migrations directory in Laravel 10, we'll see that we have a migration to create a table for a user, password reset tokens, fail jobs, and password access tokens. If we go to migrations inside of Laravel 11, and this is still the dev, so maybe these will change or there'll be additional migrations. But for now, just comparing the two, we note that you can still create a user's table and with specific user data or schema. But when we go to this one where it says jobs, and we're gonna go to the fail jobs directory, this one here you have fail jobs and it's just one table for fail jobs. But over here you have jobs, but then you have another table here called job batches. And this might be useful because it seems like they're working on allowing you to easily execute batch jobs, but then also performing some action on those batch jobs. Below that, you're gonna have your fail job. So this is the same table as the previous version of Laravel 10, but they've added batch jobs, sorry, job batches, and they've added jobs. And this also coincides with the other migration, and this one's called create cache. Now if we take a look at create cache, you have two new tables here, cache and cache locks. But what's interesting over here 
is in these cache tables. This makes sense if you're using something like, I don't know, you have some data that's like CPU intensive. Um, I take a long time to retrieve data. So this falls into using a cache driver of some sort. So something like, you know, memcache or Redis or DynamoDB. So over here, it looks like they're preparing for that and they have these tables that allow you to cache your application. This looks like it's gonna be a welcome thing for Laravel 11. And in Laravel 10, we don't have that. And you may have to create these tables before for caching, but in Laravel 11, when you run PHP Artisan Migrate, you're gonna have the ability to have created cache tables, created jobs, job batches, as well as failed jobs. Now there's a lot of things that have changed in relation to Laravel 10 versus the Laravel 11, but I think the most significant change or the most interesting change for me I found was under the routes directory. So if we go to routes and we go to routes in Laravel 10 project, you'll see that there's an api.php route. There's channels, there's console, and there's web. So what do you do if you want to have, say, API routes or channel routes or something like that, and they're not available in Laravel 11 out of the box with just the new application that you created? Well, let's check that out in terminal. So now that we're back in our terminal, let's take a look at the artisan commands. And if you go up to install, and I'm just gonna scroll up to the top here, you'll see there's one called install API. Create an API routes file and install Laravel Sanctum. So right there, we can tell that Laravel Sanctum is not installed by default inside of a Laravel 11 project. So they removed Sanctum out of the initial new project scaffold, but you can add it back. So let's just do that. So now with that command, you just notice that we just installed the API scaffolding. So that's been installed. So let's just check that out inside of our IDE. So now back inside of our IDE, we'll notice that we have the API routes have been installed and they're the same as the API routes that have been installed in previous version of Laravel. And the same would probably apply for channels. You would do PHP artisan install. And in this case, it would be broadcast. So here we are in Laravel 11 and channels route is now added back to the routes directory. So I'm not gonna go over every single change, but there's been a lot of changes and this will kind of help you see what they're trying to do and how they're trying to slim up this application. So Laravel version 11, you'll see how they removed files and things that are necessarily not needed in the beginning when you create a new project, because not everyone's gonna reach for those, but you can add them in when you need them or depending on what you need for your project, you'll be able to add that functionality as you need it. So what's become really useful in Laravel 11 is the bootstrap folder, which is where everything is gonna be bootstrapped and set up. And the apps directory has changed significantly as well. So your Laravel commands that are normally done in console inside of the kernel file are no longer gonna be set there. You'll be able to do the command somewhere else in a Laravel 11 project and same thing goes for the exceptions. And these new things will help streamline the uh, directory structure. There's no more HTTP kernel. Uh, models can cast changes now, and there's a few new traits, uh, one of them being dumpable and a bunch more. And the limit or the minimum requirement for this Laravel 11 will be 8.2. I hope you guys found that useful. And I know there was a lot to compare there. This will help you kind of get an idea as to what is coming up in Laravel version 11 and what has changed or what is going to change in Laravel 10. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.